Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. Well, it's fairly simple. Basically, you take the idea of the area of the entire circle, multiply it by which part of the circle you're talking about. Now, the area of any circle, of course, is pi r squared, right? So we're going to take pi r squared times the central angle, which in this case, for this video, is expressed in radians. And we're going to divide it by the entire rotation around a circle, which in radians is 2 pi. Now, if this is a new idea for you, because degrees or uh, angles can be measured in degrees or radians, if we're going to start right there and rotate halfway around the circle, that is considered to be pi radians. All right? Pi radians. Yes, it is the same as 180 degrees, but sometimes we measure our angles in radians. And actually, sorry, I should have moved that up a little further. So we're going halfway around the circle. Now if we keep going all the way around the circle, one complete rotation is 2 pi. Alright, so in our example here, shaded in green is the area sector we're looking at, and we're going 5 sixths of one radian around the circle. So 5 sixths pi, and almost 180 degrees. How do you find the area of that green sector? Well, you're going to do pi r squared times the central angle of course is 5 6 pi now I'm gonna write the 5 pi here but I'm gonna put the 6 on the bottom and I also have to divide by 2 pi right now it may look kinda of messy but basically it's a fraction so pi r squared the area of the entire circle times the numerator part of the central angle which is 5 pi put the 6 on the bottom from the central angle and don't forget multiply on the denominator by 2 pi alright so the obvious thing we need to do here is find some common factors so I'm going to be dividing by a pi and basically let's put our radius in there and see what happens so when I multiply this out, again, I notice that I have 36 on the top, and 6 times 2 is 12 here. So let's factor out a 12 on the bottom, 12 on the top, and that'll leave me with a 3 and a 1. So it's going to be 15 pi. 15 pi is considered the exact answer of the area of that green sector. Exact, because I have not rounded anything. But if I take my value of pi, which typically is 3.14, and multiply by the 15, I'm going to get 47.1 rounded to one decimal place, and that's considered the approximate answer. And in this video and the next one, we're going to be rounding all of our answers off to one decimal place for the approximate answer. All right, I'm going to work through two examples with you. Let's look at number five. We're looking for this area of the circle, and it's the central angle is pi over two, which is actually one fourth of the circle, isn't it? The radius is 13 meters, so what's the area of the sector? Well, we're gonna take the area of the circle itself, which is pi times 13 squared, and we're gonna multiply it by the sector area, or the, um, central angle which is pi over 2 don't forget that we're also dividing by 2 pi which goes in the denominator in this case I can cancel out a factor of pi in both cases so now I have 169 times 3.14 divided by 4 so my approximate answer is about 132.7 what's my units the radius is in meters, so we're talking area that would be square meters. Alright. Number six. 
I have a radius of 6 kilometers, and again, I have a central angle of pi over 2. So, we're going to take the area of the circle, the entire thing, pi times radius squared, times the central angle, which is pi over 2, and we're dividing by 2 pi, which goes in the denominator. At this point, we can cancel out a pi factor, and I can also divide out a 4 out of the denominator and a 4 out of the numerator, which will leave me with 9 pi. So 9 pi is the approximate answer, or excuse me, the exact answer, and if I multiply that out, I'd get 28.26 or 28.3, and that would be square kilometers. That's my approximate answer. All right, you can see these other two examples I have here uh, for you to try. That would be our next video, and look for problem set two in finding the area of a sector. Thanks a lot for watching. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.